Hey everyone, welcome back to another After Effects tutorial where we'll take a look at this cool typography effect. We'll be able to do this in just a couple of steps. Super simple stuff. So I have After Effects open here. I'll start like always by creating a new composition, calling this main. I'll go for a square composition, so 2000 by 2000 pixels, 30 frames per second, press OK. What I like doing at the beginning of all of my projects is just creating a new white background. So I'll go to layer, new, solid, calling this BG for background, making sure it's white and pressing OK. I also like locking this so I just can't move it around. Anyways, the second thing I do in almost all my projects is creating a piece of text. So I can just press Command T or Control T or press this button up here. Click in the middle and type out something. So I'll go for this typeface, which is off types brut, uh, the monospace font. And I'll just center that by going to my align tab and making sure that's nice and centered. Cool. So the heart of this blur effect is the radial blur. So what I can do is either I could just go up to effect and blur and sharpen and add the radial blur directly to my text layer. Make sure it's not the CC radial blur. I made that mistake. It's the radial blur. This will work fine, but the problem we'll run into down the line if we add the effect directly to the text is that once we create multiple instances of this text and we want to change the text, we want to change what's written here, we will have to do that to every single layer. And that's not a nice way of working. That's not what we call a procedural workflow, which is something I always recommend for any motion designer. Always try to work procedurally. And the heart of working procedurally in After Effects is pre-compositions. So this means before adding the text, I'll just right click my composition and go to pre-compose. I'll call this text. Make sure we move all the attributes and press OK. So this now means that our text is no longer editable here, but we have to double click this and this is where we can now change our text. And by pressing tab, we can then navigate back to our main composition. So this composition just sits in our main composition. That's beautiful. So now we can select our text, go to effect, blur and sharpen and select our radial blur. Cool. Okay, so the effect works like this. We have this center point here. And by dragging this around, we can change the way the blur looks. But what I like doing is I like controlling this center point, not inside this effect here, but via a null object that we then link to this center point. So what I'll do is I'll go up to layer, new null object. I'll call this blur control. By the way, you can rename layers by just hitting enter. And I'll bring up the position property of this blur control by pressing P. Then I'll navigate back to my text. And now I want to link this center point to the position of my null. So what I'll do is I'll just hold down my option button or alt if you're on a PC and then press this stopwatch of the center property. This will open up this cheeky little expression box. And what we can do now is grab this spiral looking thing, which is called a pick whip, and then just tell this effect to reference the position of our null object. We can now see the text has now updated in this expression box. We'll just click out, collapse this, and boom, this now means that if we move this null object around, the blur center point also moves around accordingly. And that's really practical because this means if we now duplicate this text multiple times, all these text blur instances will be controlled with this one null object. Okay, so the next step would be to create this nice 3D looking staggered blur effect. So what I can do is just select this text comp, duplicate it by pressing Command D or Control D, and then increasing this blur amount to let's say 10 for this one. Then I'll duplicate it again, increase this to maybe 14, and then I'll duplicate it again and go to 20. And you can already see this nice staggered look forming. What I don't like about this, and this is more of a stylistic choice, is how dark everything is getting. So what I did in my original example was to select all of these, press T to bring up the opacity, and I then also staggered the opacity. So I'll have the core of this text be somewhere at 50%. Then I'll go to the next one, decrease it to maybe 40, and then just keep going. Yeah, this is looking a bit more subtle. I like this look a lot more. And you can see if we now move this null object around, each of these blur instances get adjusted just the way we want. And 
the way we animate this now, you already guessed it probably, is we just animate this null object. There are two ways you could do this. You could either just drop a keyframe on the position and just, you know, manually add some keyframes like so. And that will work fine if you want to do it this way. But what I prefer is going over to window, making sure that motion sketch is enabled. And then I'll navigate to the motion sketch panel because this allows me to essentially tell After Effects, look at my mouse position and then just create keyframes from my mouse position. Extremely handy to create animations really quickly. So I'll just, so I'll just select my null object, go to motion sketch, press start capture, and now I can just click and drag around. You can see these dots forming. And once I release my mouse, boom, we have keyframes set automatically. This is a really nifty feature that not a lot of people know. Okay, and that's essentially the effect. We can still fine tune this by adjusting the blur amount. Uh, by the way, if you wanna get the extended project file of this and also project files for my other tutorials, those are available on my Gumroad. The link is in the description. So yeah, this is the effect. Of course, we can still fine tune this. If you wanna have the text to be more readable, for example, I can just go into my first text instance and reduce this to maybe two. If I wanna make it less readable, I'll just increase it to six and just drag it out a bit more. So you can play around with this. It has a nice 3D look going on. And the cool thing about working procedurally is if we just go into my text comp and change this to something else, then press tab to navigate back, you can see each of our text instances are updated. I mean, of course, this doesn't really have to be text. We could also open this pre-comp, get rid of the text and just drop in some sort of logo, navigate back and it will update on the fly. Feel free to experiment with whatever you want to put in here. And yeah, that's pretty much it. I hope you learned something and see you in the next one.